As I'm sure all Canadians know, the harsh winters in our country aren't for everyone, and that's especially true for the wildlife. Many of Canada's animal residents either head somewhere warm for the chilly season, or they hunker down and sleep through it. But some animals don't just survive the winter, they thrive in it, and they're built to do so. In this creature feature, I'm going to tell you about six incredibly adapted animals I like to call Canada's winter warriors. First up is the mountain goat. These animals are the largest mammal living in their high altitude environments, and that's thanks to their unparalleled climbing abilities. Mountain goats live among steep, rocky cliffs and bluffs in alpine and subalpine regions throughout British Columbia and the northwestern United States. They maintain gravity-defying rock climbing abilities across all seasons because of their specially designed hooves. They have two-toed hooves with hard outer edges and soft foot pads. When stepping on uneven terrain, the soft pad conforms to bumpy protrusions while the hard edge locks the foot in place. Sharp dew claws behind the hooves provide traction when going downhill. Of course, the ability to climb effortlessly on icy cliff sides would mean nothing without a warm winter coat. So luckily, mountain goats have that too. In winter, mountain goats grow a double-layered coat. The inner layer is thick like sheep's wool and provides an insulating base layer to keep heat in and cold out. The outer layer is made of long, coarse hairs called guard hairs, which are hollow to protect the body from wind, rain, and snow. With the help of this cozy coat, mountain goats can withstand temperatures as low as minus 46 degrees Celsius and winds of up to 160 kilometers an hour. The white color of their fur helps them camouflage in snowy environments, which, when paired with those amazing climbing abilities, means mountain goats have few natural predators and life is basically a winter wonderland for these animals. Our next winter warrior is the Canada Lynx. This fierce feline thrives in chilly forests and tundras throughout Canada and parts of the northwestern United States. Often confused with their close cousin the bobcat, Canada lynx are distinct due to their ability to hunt in harsher, snowier climates. The best way to tell a Canada lynx from a bobcat is how high their rear is when they walk. Lynx have very long legs for hunting in deep snow, which is something bobcats don't need, so a lynx's rear is higher. The advantage to life in the cold for a lynx is that few predators can survive in the same space, allowing them to occupy a higher position on the food chain. These cats are ferocious predators who hunt in snow with ease thanks to built-in snowshoes. Large paws help them walk quietly on top of packed snow instead of sinking into it, while fur on the undersides of the feet provides traction on slippery surfaces. Lynx also have double-layered winter coats for warmth, similar to mountain goats, and their brown summer fur turns gray in winter for camouflage against their gray and white forest habitat. Lynx are hard to see and hard to hear, so prey animals like snowshoe hares are no match for these super stealthy creatures. Next up, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the caribou, which is basically Santa's reindeer, and technically the same species, so obviously they're built for winter. Caribou thrive in cold and snowy boreal forests throughout North America, Russia, and Scandinavia, where lichens, their favorite foods, grow. They have compact bodies, small tails, and short ears to minimize surface area exposed to the cold. Their legs, however, have to be long and lean for plowing through deep snow. To compensate, the veins and arteries in their legs are close together, so the warm blood in the arteries heats the cold blood in the veins, preventing the legs from freezing and preventing cold blood from lowering the animal's body temperature. Caribou also have incredibly insulating fur, so much so that snow that falls on a caribou's back will not melt because virtually no body heat escapes through the fur. Caribou fur is like a built-in wetsuit too, so these animals have no trouble swimming in frigid waters. Their outer guard hairs are even hollow to help with buoyancy. In addition, caribou have hair from the tips of their noses down to the bottoms of their feet. Hairs on their muzzles and nostrils warms cold air and helps them sniff out food in the snow, and hairs between the toes provides grip and warmth. I don't know about you, but I can't think of any improvements I could make to caribou to make them any better adapted for life in the cold. Next on the list is an arctic avian ambusher, the snowy owl. Snowy owls are champions of the tundra and high arctic, inhabiting Canada, the northern United States, Greenland, Iceland, the British Isles, northern Europe, and parts of Scandinavia, Russia, and China, to name a few. 
Their characteristic white plumage makes them excellent at camouflaging and sneak attack ambush hunting in snow-covered environments. In order to keep warm, snowy owls want to expend as little energy as possible. They make short flights low to the ground and prefer to sit and wait for prey rather than search for it. In addition, a snowy owl's entire body is insulated with a dense layer of warm down and thick outer feathering, right down to the legs and toes. Their warm feathers and round bodies help them maintain a body temperature of 38 to 40 degrees Celsius, even when air temperatures reach minus 50 degrees Celsius. Next is probably one of the first animals that comes to mind when you think about winter, the polar bear. It's no secret that polar bears are extremely well adapted to the cold. These magnificent beasts live in the Arctic on ice-covered waters and in the Arctic regions of Canada, Alaska, Greenland, Norway, and Russia. Living in some of the coldest climates on Earth, it's critical to have a warm coat of fur. A polar bear's thick, double-layered fur keeps them so warm that they're actually at risk of overheating while running, even in the harshest temperatures. Polar bears also have a thick layer of fat for warmth, up to 11.4 centimeters thick, in fact. Dinner plate-sized paws distribute the bear's massive weight on top of ice so they don't fall through, and slip-proof treads, called papillae, provide traction on slippery terrain. They also have sharp claws of over 5 centimeters in length for maximum grip on ice and snow. If that wasn't impressive enough, the claws are also barbed to help the polar bear hunt its favorite food, seals. Seals are very slippery, so polar bears use the extra point in the center of their claws to hold on to their prey. There is no messing with a polar bear up at the North Pole. Last, but certainly not least, we have an animal commonly associated with Canada, but not always associated with winter. But make no mistake, the North American beaver can absolutely handle the cold. These semi-aquatic rodents can be found in wetlands all over North America, except for the northern and southernmost tips. A warm and waterproof coat keeps the beavers cozy and dry when swimming in icy waters, and they also draw additional heat from their tail. A beaver's waterproof coat is composed of a layer of coarse guard hairs on the surface and a thick layer of fine hooked hairs underneath. The tiny hooks mesh together tightly to keep water out. Beavers also secrete an oily waterproofing substance which they regularly comb through their fur using their front paws. Beavers are known for their ability to chew down trees, and they do so to build lodges to shelter themselves from the cold. They create a structure of wood and mud that freezes together to form impenetrable walls. The only entrances to the lodges are underwater, so their house is completely sealed from outside air, save for one little ventilation hole in the top. If you ever see steam coming out of the top of a beaver lodge, that's a good sign that a beaver is home, snoring away in its safe and toasty lodge. So there you have it. Six amazingly adapted winter warriors native to the Canadian wilderness. Now you know how a lynx moves so effortlessly through deep snow, and how a caribou manages not to freeze its skinny legs. But next time you find yourself complaining about the cold and wishing you could be more like a polar bear, don't be so hard on yourself. We humans are winter warriors in our own rights. We invented fireplaces and hot chocolate after all. A pretty impressive winter adaptation if you ask me. Stay warm and happy winter friends! <laughs>